We've had a lot of requests for the Lucas wallet from JJ Leathersmith. It's a cash wrap with great ease of use, but does this flap here get in the way? Well, let's get into it. We see two versions here. We have the US dollar version, it's the USD version, and we have the international version. Obviously, you can see there's a difference here, and this is really to accommodate the taller currencies. And so, really, I, I always go for the greatest flexibility, so I always like the international, but it does come in two colors, honey and cafe, and that's what we see here. Let's, uh, <laughs> all right, we'll just go with this one, but we'll uh, use the international when we get into the currencies. Let's take a look at this here. Kind of a rough cut. Some nice strong stitching we see here in the thread. Ah, huh, got here. Aha. Uh -huh. This is a, a trifold. Looks very familiar to one we just reviewed, the cash fin from Lost Dutchman. Kind of lay that out there. You can kind of see that. You can see uh, from an exterior perspective, this is where we've got a card slot. And if we take this up and it all wraps up like this, this is how it sits. Now it's this flap thing that I'm kind of wondering about here, but I We'll talk about this a little bit more, but anyway, I want to talk about uh, the look of this, the feel, and uh, we'll look at the details, but this is awesome. That's also made from one piece of leather, and it is made in Ecuador. Jonathan Jameson has an interesting story, but anyway, let's just move on. Now, this flap would appear to be useless without a strap, but you would need a little more time to see why this works just fine, which we'll address. But if we flip this over, you can see we don't have anything on the back. Well, you flip this up, and you have a quick access card slot right here. There's no strap here to interfere with this flap, so you're able to get to your cards here quickly. And this is the first of two interior card slots. We have one here. We open it up and we have a second right here. This is a slit that, that uh, works with this back slot, and this is where you have the cash wrap. Cash goes into here, lays, and then you fold, fold, and you're on your way. And that is a quick review of the features of the JJ Leathersmith Lucas Wallet. And it measures 4.2 by 2.8 by 0.4, and it weighs 52 grams. Now, it's worth noting that JJ Leathersmith also produces an international wallet that I mentioned. This one here, okay, so that you can see how they function. And we'll kind of work with this on, on the way out. Um, it accommodates all currencies, including those pesky taller ones like Euro and Yen, those varieties that we come across. That was quite the exercise. Uh, four is probably minimalist, uh, reasonable six. Uh, I had six in here, probably a little much, but it needed to break in a bit. The company does recommend up to eight cards and 30 notes. I was trying to get 12 and 10 in there. Again, a little break in period is kind of required. You can see how this fits in the pocket. Again, very easily fits in your hand, slides in and out. You would want to slide this in with the, uh, with the flap facing up towards you so it goes in and doesn't catch. Other than that, it's you know a great wallet for the front pocket. I like the rougher look of this leather. Also noticed that the monogram of the maker is on the inside. It's right here. It's not plastered on the front. The, the front is kept nice and clean uh, on both sides. And this is what develops a patina. This is what actually then molds to your body and begins to, well, let me just show you. L look at, look at the, uh, the picture right here of what this looks like once it's broken in. It's beautiful, fantastic. Now from a quality perspective, there's really Nothing more to say other than it's designed and made in Ecuador. It's a thinner cut of leather to facilitate the slimmer profile. It is a veg grain, veg grain, full grain veg tan, vachetta leather, and it, oh man, it does. It smells great. It's a waxed polyester thread. It's also used to ensure the longevity. Now, Jonathan, along with his business partner, Humbi, hand dye the leather with a water soluble dye, which is why you don't see the color all the way through the leather, like we've seen here. You can see that it's just, uh, it's not dyed on both sides, but this is a nice feeling flesh side. It's very soft. And if you're okay with that, I think that the, 
the darker edges blend into this. And I'm usually a fan of, of dyeing on both sides. And this one doesn't bother me. Now understand that surface dyeing is a common practice, but it does have its detractors. We've talked about this, depending on how the dyeing is done. If it's an aniline dye, it's, if it's used, and a protectant is applied to it, like an acrylic layer, then really you avoid all the issues of bleeding, which a lot of people are concerned about, you know, having this color bleed off into your clothes. Jonathan's team actually applies this natural polish on the exterior to seal in the dye, and it keeps it looking awesome. Now, regarding Jonathan's dyeing practice, uh, it feels and looks like an acrylic layer was applied, but it's it's not. I can't determine that for sure, but it's that natural uh, piece that he puts on it that really makes it nice. Now, he buys all of his all of his materials within 500 kilometers of his shop in Ecuador, which I think is very admirable. He travels to all of those vendors to buy that material. It's priced for $85. And as I mentioned before, by way of usability, this strap that we've seen in the past that comes across here really adds a step. You have to open it up to get to it, pull it out of the strap. The Lucas doesn't have this, so you're right into your cards or cash immediately. And as I showed in the beginning, as the wallet forms to your body and begins to really meld from the heat and what goes on, this flap sits there. It doesn't poke up, it actually just becomes part of the wallet, and it isn't a, a difficulty. And as I mentioned, you've of course got the uh, international version, it's a little wider, and uh, again, optional for you. I, I actually prefer this just because I like the option of flexibility of carrying more foreign currencies if I need to. And at that point, it could serve for a wallet you could carry internationally. Now let's get on to the final score. For quality of five, this is a great leather and there are great tanneries around the world. They don't all just exist in the US. Price of three, features of three, usability of four. Again, it may seem odd to remove that strap, but I kind of like it. And perception of three. That gives us a great score of 39 out of 50. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next review. Bye.